Hello, this is Gary Callis with Explode Magazine and Around Town with Gary Callis. Today, we have a subject matter that is very, very, very important, so we're not going to waste your time. We're going to jump right into it. As my guests, I have Lieutenant Michael Austin, I have Officer Cole Kelly, and Officer Chris Miller. Recently, we've had a, a rash of um, violent crimes against police officers being shot, officers shooting other people, and just that, just violent crime nationwide has just been rampant. Rather than us just speculate as to what's been going on, we're actually going to have actual police officers actually talk about this thing, offering their own opinion. So gentlemen, we're going to jump right inside this thing. We've all been watching the TV, we've all been watching social media, we've been watching these rash of police shootings, police being shot. Gentlemen, talk to me. What do you all think? Okay, uh, yeah, nationwide we have seen a spike in officer-involved shootings, uh, two to be recent uh, in Louisiana and Minnesota. Uh, just looking at those situations that have occurred, we want to you know, make sure that we educate the public on what should happen when they encounter the police in a traffic stop or a consensual encounter on a call, uh, such as Louisiana. That was a call for service while those officers were there, to my understanding. And um, I think if we talk to the public about communicating with the officer, this would help ease some of those things from happening. Uh, so just looking at that particular call, call for service that a male threatened someone with a gun possibly, that is going to put an officer on a level that's higher than normal just going out driving around in his or her car. Uh, we know it's a weapon involved based on the call for service. So uh, from the public side, if you know you're involved in the call with a weapon, you probably want to make sure the police can see your hands. That's critical. Uh, I think as an officer, that's what I want to see right off the bat, your hands. And that's the first conversation that I'm going to have. I'm okay. Going to such and such. I'm here for this reason. I need to see your hands. Keep your hands where I can see them. So make sure we understand. So you're saying now that if a per they're doing a basic traffic stop. The most important thing that the passenger and the driver could do is to make sure that when the officer walks to the car, is make sure that our hands are displayed so we can see your hands. Yes. I mean, I mean. So what's the reason for that? I mean, tell us, talk to us. Why is that? Why that's so important, Chris? Well, I, because hands hold the weapons. Okay. Hands hold the weapons. That's what we're focused on. So that's what we want to see. We want to see where your hands are at all times. And communication is key on both sides. If the officer communicates effectively, and if the citizens in the vehicle communicate effectively. Okay. So, um, I understand what you're saying, because if the, if, the, if the gun can't fire itself, your hands have to be on it. The knife just can't cut you by itself. Well, if it's just sitting still. But typically, your hands have to be on it. Right. right. Okay. Now, what does a person do if their ID, the registration cards, all these things are inside the glove compartment, Cole? I mean, how does that work? Well, I think like the sergeant just said, it's important that all these things are communicated to us clearly. Because um, obviously people keep important documentation in different areas of the vehicle. It's not always out in the open. So as long as they're able to communicate that to us, there shouldn't be any problems. Okay. So I want to make sure we have make sure that everyone understands this is clear. So basically, if you do have registration, license in, the, in your, reg in your um, glove compartment, don't even try to reach for it as the police are walking up to the car. Correct. You basically just want to have your hands in plain view, just sit there, and once they come to the car, basically tell them at that point, my license, my registration, my important um, documents are in the glove compartment. And then just wait for the officer to respond, go ahead and get it. Absolutely. Right. Okay? All right. I can, I can, I can understand it. So what's, what goes on when you have more than one person in the car, Michael? How does that work? Okay, so having more than one person in the car, this is a thing where it's very important that communication is, is, is key. So the officer, one, if it's four subjects in a car, that's more than he can watch at one time. So he should ask for backup. However, if backup is not available to him, then he is going to give clear instructions before he get into plain view of both windows of that car. So he should be giving instructions. Uh, Sir, ma'am, I need you to put your hands forward. Driver, put your hands on the steering wheel. Passenger, front passenger hands on the dashboard, rear passenger's hands on the seat. And he can demonstrate if need be, but he need to be watching their hands. So that's critical. So that communication is important. Um, oftentimes, traffic stops are made and people reach around in the car, as you discussed earlier, down to the floorboard, glove compartment, or middle console, thinking, hey, I'm going to help the officer out and get my registration early. But from behind, you see okay, further right, movement, right. and that's a problem. Right. Um, that is going to make also go from a calm level to a high level. Right. Possible reaching for a weapon. That's what also is going to be thinking his or her safety going home every night. Okay. See, so basically, you're not think. Well, I, you know, it's not that you're thinking that everybody's a bad person. Right. It's the fact that your life is in danger, 
at any given point. You just never, ever know. Right. Well, we, in our job, we deal with the small portion of society that is having issues where they need to call the police or where we need to encounter them for whatever violation. Okay. So, in what we do, just in general, we deal with a portion of society that may be out of line. So, our mental is always going to be focused on correcting an action. So, communication is key. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm, it's, it's interesting that all three of you have said the same key word over and over again. The word is communication. Yeah. And I understand how important communication is. So, what type of communication? So, when we say communication, what are we looking for? Uh, we are looking for the citizen to communicate with us, and we want to make sure that we are communicating with them. Now, in doing that, we want to look at their posture, their demeanor, facial expressions. Those things are critical. If we can tell if someone's angry, surely that is going to prompt us to act differently as well. Um, but having that dialogue going with that subject that you're talking to is critical. So if a person's angry, for example, sir, I see you upset. Can you calm down? Tell me what's going on. And then, of course, if we see a movement, such as a hand going to the pocket, sir, please don't do that. Just keep your hands where I can see them. Get that communication going. He or she will probably respond back, but you should be watching their hands the whole time you're having that conversation. Okay. Right? And believe me, since I've been sitting here watching y'all, I've been watching y'all's hands, too. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and the thing is, you know, and, and it, here's the thing. You are absolutely right, because as long as I can see your hands where they are, I know right. for a fact your hand is not on a weapon, your hand is not on a gun, your hand is not on something that could cause me bodily or personal harm. Right. Okay, so I, I understand that. And nobody, nobody ever wants to think that when you strap up to go to work in the morning, that there's going to be a situation that's not going to allow you to come back home. Right. Right. All right? And then inside that, too, putting you in a situation where somebody else may not make it back home. Absolutely. All right. So the whole idea is communication having your hands on the open, and just making sure you have the right attitude on both sides. Right. Yes, <laughs> okay. Yes, All right. Now, the other thing we want to talk about just a little bit is about this spike in crime we've had in Richmond. So what's going on with that, fellas? Well, crime moves in trains. Okay. Anyway. So you'll have a period where crime is heightened, and you'll have a period where crime is lowered. You know, the police department, we're going to do what we do all the time anyway. So we have our initiatives that we do with the community. We have initiatives that we do to enforce crime. But ultimately, police work in general as a whole is largely uh, community-oriented, but also responsive to whatever the community is doing at the time. So a large portion of that is going to fall back on the community itself, because there has to be a desire to want to do better. Right. You know, so that's why we have those partnerships with the community. You know, one of the one of the craziest words that kill me is the word snitch. That word kills me because I don't think that folks really understand what that what they're really doing when they're using that word. There's a big difference between a good citizen and a snitch. If I see a man or see someone breaking inside someone's house and I report that crime, I'm reporting that crime not for an unselfish reason, because the person that just broke in that man's house may break in my house next. Right. Right? And, and, and that's that's exactly right. I don't like to use that word snitch because nobody wants to it's, it's just communicating to protect yourself Commun right. and those around you. Because, uh, as usual, those who feel like that is not important until it happens to them oh, or a family member. Right. Then they don't have a problem talking. Right. See, but the thing is, the crazy it. thing is the snitch. The snitch is the person that actually perpetrated a crime with somebody else. They got caught. And they're going to ask, how come you didn't catch him? Or how about him? Or how about him? Thinking that things would be lesser for them if I snitched on him. See, the whole thing about being a good citizen is protecting your community, is protecting the other families around you. See, if the crime, crime is running rampant, for what I'm understanding, is because nobody's coming forward to talk. They're not, they're not communicating, as you're saying. So how important is it for people in the general public to come forward and talk? Yeah, and, and Sergeant Miller said partnership. Having a partnership with the community, that is critical that they communicate with us and we communicate with them. Uh, in our sector, we do quite a lot of walks. And in those walks, we are knocking door to door or people standing on corners. We are going to talk to them. Hey, this is who I am. What concerns do you have? How can we make your neighborhood better? Now, say you don't want to talk to us, but you have a property manager in one of the housing areas possibly. Talk to her then or him. Let them know that information so that we can move forward on to help make your community safe. It's just no way that you uh, 
can live in an area and not see what's going on. As you did, gave an example, someone breaking into someone's house. Someone's going to see that. That is very rare with the houses being so close in proximity to each other that no one sees what's going on. Or they have a shootout, not one shot fired and they leave multiple shots fired back and forth, but no one's seen anything. Right. That, that's impossible. But Sergeant Miller hit a very valid point. Then it's an issue if your child or your sibling is struck, what are the police doing? Well, ma'am, right. sir, we are here, but we can only go as far as you guide us. We have to have information to move forward on things that need to be addressed. And I'm privileged to have officers and a supervisor like Sergeant Miller that want to move forward on things as I would. So we have to have that partnership working, open lines of communication to address issues that's occurring. You know, I will, I will commend you guys because I will tell you, you all are visible. I mean, you are visible. There's no doubt that once you come across the river and you come to the east side of town, the, pres the police presence is there. You see the blue light riding through. I see you guys walking around. There's, there's no doubt that you're trying to do your job. The, the, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to try to hold anybody any longer, but I want to ask one question. What can we do? I understand communication is important, creating partnerships are important, but uh, is there anything else that you think that we, as a general public, together we can do to help curtail some of the crime and some of the, the violent crimes we're having? Uh, absolutely. We have Crime Stoppers. That's, of course, one way that you can report a crime or a person that you believe have done some kind of uh, heinous crime or any kind. Uh, you can report that person by calling that Crime Stoppers number, of course. Uh, you have that number around here, 780 So that, okay. that's clearly one way to communicate. You heard me describe earlier about just living in a housing area. Report this crime or what you see happening to the manager. They will do their job, of course, and let us know what we need to do to address that situation. So we want to do that. We want to make the community safe. We want to make the neighborhood safe, so we have to have the information to move forward. There's no way you're living in an area and don't see what's going on. You right. Know. Right. Gentlemen, I really, really appreciate you all giving us your time because this information is valuable. People are losing their lives on both sides, from the police side and from the public side, again, because of lack of of knowledge. A lot of times what you're saying too, because of lack of effective communication. So that is something we all need to work on to make sure that we can make our streets safe for both our police officers and for our families. Again, I want to thank you all for coming. Um, Lieutenant Austin, Brother Kelly, Brother Miller, I appreciate you all for coming. And I thank you all for giving us your time and bringing us into your living room. You all have a great evening and thank you so much.